Dear students, welcome to EPG Pathsala Biophysics. This is paper 11, Cellular and Molecular Biophysics, module 13, Ubiquitin Proteosomal System. I am Dr. Karthikeyan Pithusamy from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. After completing this module, you should be able to understand the following. Discovery of Ubiquitin Proteosomal System, Structure of Ubiquitin Protein and Ubiquitin Genes, Different Roles of Differential Addition of Ubiquitin Signals for Degradation of Proteins, Enzymes Involved in Ubiquitination, Structure of Proteasome, Role of Ubiquitin Proteosomal System in Endoplasmic Reticulum Associated Protein Degradation, Ubiquitin Proteasome Complex in Various Diseases, Proteasome Inhibitors, Ubiquitin independent proteasomal degradation, ubiquitin like modifiers, the difference between lysosomal protein degradation and ubiquitin proteasomal degradation. Finally, prokaryotic ubiquitin like protein. Okay. Let's begin. Ubiquitin proteasomal system mediates the degradation of many but not all proteins. Addition of ubiquitin to a protein does not always lead to the degradation of protein. The role of ubiquitin is versatile. These are the scientists Aaron, Avram and Irwin. They were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2004 for the discovery of ubiquitin mediated protein degradation. What is ubiquitin? Ubiquitin is a protein. What kind of protein? It is a small, heat stable, compact, globular protein. Why is it named as ubiquitin? Because it is ubiquitously found in all the eukaryotic organisms. That is why it is named as ubiquitin. Here, I want you to understand the difference between ubiquitin and ubiquinone. Many students confuse these two. Ubiquitin is a protein. Ubiquinone is a lipid. It is an isoprenoid derivative with 10 isoprene chains. That is why it is also known as Q10. Coenzyme Q. Okay. What you are seeing is the primary structure of ubiquitin. What is primary structure? It is nothing but the linear sequence of amino acids from amino terminal to carboxy terminal. Primary structure of human ubiquitin contains 76 amino acids. The 76th amino acid is glycine. It is shown in blue color in the image. Here, I have shown lysine residues in red color. Count the number of lysine residues. There are 7 lysine residues. What is the importance of lysine? It will be clear in our further discussion. Ubiquitin is a highly conserved protein. There are only three amino acids residue differences in the sequence of ubiquitin from yeast and human ubiquitin. This sequence conservation suggests that the vast majority of amino acids that make up ubiquitin are essential as apparently any mutation that have occurred over the evolutionary history have been removed by natural selection. Can you remember any other highly conserved protein? Yeah, it is cytochrome C. It is a mobile carrier in the electron transport chain. It is also highly conserved during evolution. You know that proteins are coded by genes. Mammalian ubiquitin is coded by following four different genes. Their names are UBA52, RPS27A, UBB and UBC. Ubiquitin is synthesized as a precursor protein consisting of either polyubiquitin chains or a single ubiquitin moiety fused to an other unrelated protein. UBB and UBC genes code for polyubiquitin chains while UBA52 
and RPS 27A genes code for single ubiquitin moiety fused to an unrelated protein. UBA52 gene codes for a single copy of ubiquitin fused to the ribosomal protein L40. RPS27A gene codes for single copy of ubiquitin that is fused to ribosomal protein S27A. Ubiquitination is the post-translational modification of proteins in which one or multiple molecules of ubiquitin is added to a target protein. Addition of single molecule of ubiquitin to a protein is known as monoubiquitination. This does not target a protein for destruction in the proteasome. Tandem addition of at least four molecule of ubiquitin is required for destruction of the protein in proteasome. Okay. So, addition of at least four molecules of ubiquitin in a tandem order is known as polyubiquitination. You can clearly see this in the image. The term multi-ubiquitination or multi mono is self-explanatory and it can be understood by the diagram. And you see, yes, in the image stands for substrate that is the target protein. What is that K in between substrate and ubiquitin? K stands for lysine. Okay. K is the one letter code for lysine. Ubiquitin is attached to the lysine of the substrate. It will be clear in our further discussion. Okay. Ubiquitination does not always imply the destruction of the target protein. Ubiquitination serves various functions depending on the number and the way of addition of ubiquitin molecules. In this table, it is shown that multi-ubiquitination is involved in endocytosis, polyubiquitination is involved in degradation of target protein in the proteasome. But you see the role of monoubiquitin is versatile. Monoubiquitination plays an important role in endocytosis, endosomal sorting, histone regulation, DNA repair, budding of virus and nuclear to cytoplasmic transport. Okay. Signals that distain the protein for degradation are found in the target protein itself. These signals can be explained by the following theories. N-terminal degran, pest sequences, signals in the hydrophobic core of the protein, masking and unmasking. Let us discuss these theories one by one. N-terminal degran. Let us begin with this. First, you should know what is a degran. A degran is a specific sequence of amino acids in a protein that directs the starting place of degradation of the protein. The endogram theory was proposed by Alexander Varsavsky. Proteins that have serine as the N-terminal amino acid were long lived with a half-life of more than 20 hours. In contrast, proteins with aspartate as the N-terminal amino acids have a half-life of only 3 minutes. So, Alexander suggested that these amino acids in the N-terminal determine the half-life of proteins. Next, let us see what is this PEST sequences. See this PEST, it indicates the one letter code of amino acids. Okay. Certain amino acid sequences appear to be signals for degradation. One such sequence is PEST, P for proline, E for glutamate, S for serine, T for threonine. Clear? Proteins with pest sequence has a low half-life. It is found that serine of pest sequence undergoes phosphorylation which later promotes ubiquitination of the protein in the lysine residues. Okay? Now, let us see what are those signals in the hydrophobic core. In some proteins, Degradation signals may also be buried deep inside the hydrophobic core. This is why partially folded 
or abnormal mutant proteins are more prone for degradation as the degradation signal is now exposed. Now let us discuss what is masking and unmasking is. Some degradation signals can also be subjected to masking and unmasking. If the degradation signal is masked by protein-protein interaction, the protein will be long-lived. Once the binding partner is separated, now there is unmasking. Now the degradation signal is exposed, the protein is destroyed. Clear? Ubiquitination is a three-step enzymatic process. The three steps are activation, conjugation, ligation. There are three enzymes E1, E2, E3. Okay. Let us discuss one by one. First begin with activation. For a chemical reaction to occur, the substrate needs to be activated. Activation step is catalyzed by E1 also known as ubiquitin activating enzyme. There is only one E1 enzyme in the human body because there is only one ubiquitin. So, you need only one E1. Okay. First, this E1 binds to ATP, magnesium and ubiquitin. In the next step, ubiquitin is added to the cysteine residue. See the image, it is clearly shown. The, to the SH group of cysteine, now the ubiquitin is added. ATP is hydrolyzed to AMP and inorganic pyrophosphate. Hydrolysis of this inorganic pyrophosphate makes this reaction irreversible. Okay. Activation is followed by conjugation. This is catalyzed by ubiquitin conjugating enzyme that is E2. Cysteine residue of E2 attacks the E1 ubiquitin complex. This lead to the transfer of ubiquitin from E1 to E2. This is a transthioesterification reaction. Are you able to understand the term thioesterification that is transthioesterification? See, ubiquitin was initially bound to E1 via a thioester bond. Okay. So, it was a thioesterification reaction. In the E2 catalyzed reaction, what is happening? Ubiquitin is just transferred from cysteine of E1 to cysteine of E2. The bond is same. Bond is thioesterification. Okay, thioester bond. But here there is transfer of this thioester bond from E1 to E2. That is why this reaction is transthioesterification reaction. Very important. Understand this. The reaction catalyzed by E1 is just thioester formation. Okay. But the reaction catalyzed by E2 is transthioesterification. In our body, there are 12 to 30 E2 enzyme. How many E1 enzymes are present in the body? Only one. But there are 12 to 30 E2 enzymes are present. The third step and the final step is ligation. This ligation is catalyzed by E3 that is ubiquitin ligase. E3 binds both to E2 and the target protein. Look at the image. Okay. E3 binds to both E2 and the substrate that is your target protein. Okay. E3 transfers the ubiquitin molecule from E2 to substrate. Here, carboxy terminal glycine, that is the 76th amino acid of ubiquitin is your glycine, right? So, the carboxy terminal glycine of ubiquitin is attached to the epsilon amino group of lysine. Remember, there in the previous image, we have seen that there is a K. K stands for lysine, right? So, ubiquitin is added to the epsilon amino group of lysine of the target protein. Okay. So, this bond is an isopeptide bond. What is an isopeptide bond? Isopeptide bond is a peptide bond between non-alpha or non-alpha carboxyl group. Okay. So, isopeptide bond is a bond between non-alpha amino group or non-alpha carboxyl group. For example, in glutathione, 
you can see a isopeptide bond because glutathione is a gamma glutamyl cystinyl glycine so the same way here instead of alpha amino group carboxyl group of glycine is attached to the epsilon amino group okay so that is why this is an isopeptide bond carboxy terminal glycine of incoming ubiquitin is added to one of the seven lysine residues of the existing ubiquitin also okay e3 can also attach more ubiquitin molecules to the target bound ubiquitin so this is what polyubiquitination so in tandem more ubiquitin molecules can be attached to the substrate now remember there are seven lysine residues in the ubiquitin okay so these lysine residues are involved in the ubiquitination process clear there are four families of ubiquitin ligases h e c t that is homologous to the e6 ap carboxyl terminus ring finger see the name it's really interesting new gene third is u box family fourth is phd finger that is plant homeodomain zinc fingers okay poly ubiquitinated proteins are destroyed by a structure known as proteasome okay so this proteasome is known as 26s proteasome s is the sedimentation coefficient that is your swedberg constant okay the proteasome is cylindrical in shape see the image it is cylindrical in shape and made up of 20s core particle and 19s regulatory particle this 19s cap is involved in substrate recognition unfolding and deubiquitination okay in the first step proteasome removes the ubiquitin from the substrate okay the core that is your 20s core catalyzes the proteolysis and see the structure of 20s core it is shown in the right side of the image see this 20s core is made up of four stacked rings the alpha unit forms the outer two rings the alpha unit is shown in the image in the green color okay the beta units forms the inner two rings which is which is shown in blue color in the image okay the core is a family of a a a proteins this triple a protein this stands for at bases associated with diverse cellular activities these aa proteins destroy peptide bonds non specifically okay so it is like a mixer grinder everything is destroyed and ultimately the destroyed amino acids are released to the amino acid pool clear now let us discuss the role of ubiquitin proteasomal system in endoplasmic reticulum associated protein degradation what is this endoplasmic reticulum associated protein degradation let's see protein folding is not always 100% efficient misfolding does happen these misfolded proteins if allowed to persist inside the cell can cause protein aggregation and undesirable consequences so these misfolded proteins they create a cellular response known as unfolded protein response upr in the endoplasmic reticulum okay so in this response what happens all these misfolded proteins are retro translocated to the cytosol and now they will be ubiquitinated and further destroyed in the proteasome okay so this process is known as endoplasmic reticulum associated protein degradation or erad e r a d okay now let us discuss the pathology associated with ubiquitin okay structure is always related to function in medicine we have to always correlate the physiology with the pathology now let us discuss one by one vhl gene is a tumor suppressor gene okay it is nothing but an e3 ubiquitin ligase that regulates the expression of hypoxia inducible factor 1 
loss of VHL is associated with increased expression of vascular endothelial growth factor which induces excess and unwanted angiogenesis. Clear? Next is TP53. TP53 is a tumor suppressor gene. It is a transcription factor. P53 protein is normally bound to MDM2, another protein. This is nothing but an ubiquitin ligase that inhibits P53 and it also causes proteosomal destruction of P53 because MDM2 is nothing but a E3 ubiquitin ligase. Overexpression of MDM2 will lead to loss of P53, right? Excess destruction of P53. What is P53? P53 is the guardian of genome. If P53 is not available, it will lead to cancer. Okay. Human papilloma virus 16 and 18 are associated with cervical cancer in females. Okay. Not all human papilloma viruses are carcinogenic. Only these 16 and 18, they are high risk type. Why? Because they have certain oncoprotein. One of the oncoprotein of human papilloma virus 16 and 18 is E6. Okay. What is this E6? E6 is nothing but an ubiquitin ligase that targets P53. Okay. E6 associates, associates with another protein E6AP that is E6 associated protein. Okay. This E6, E6AP complex now binds to P53 and they will ubiquitinate P53. Okay. So ultimately what will happen? P53 will be destroyed. P53 is the guardian of genome. If it is not available, there will be cancer. Clear? Parkin, which causes autosomal recessive early onset Parkinson's disease is an ubiquitin ligase. Parkin is involved in clearance of damaged mitochondria by mitophagy. Mutation of Parkin will lead to mitochondrial dysfunction because damaged mitochondria are not removed. So, this will lead to neuronal death in Parkinson's disease. It is also seen that Parkinson disease, Parkin mutation is associated with tumorigenesis genesis also because mitochondria is very very important for the intact nature of the cell. From the previous discussion, you can understand that proteasomal inhibitors can be used for the treatment for cancer. Bortezomib is the first proteasomal inhibitor approved in 2003 by US FDA for the treatment of multiple myeloma. The boron atom in Bortezomib binds to the catalytic site of 26S proteasome with high affinity and specificity. This prevents the degradation of proapatotic factors permitting apoptosis. Okay. So, apoptosis of cancer is good, right? These are the other two proteasomal inhibitors. They are also approved by US FDA. So, overall, till date, only three proteasomal inhibitors are approved for human therapeutics. These are the other proposed proteasomal inhibitors, disulfiram, epigallocatechin 3 gallate, marisomib, oprosomib, delanzomib, epoxomycin and beta hydroxy beta methyl butyrate. Few of them are in clinical trials and few of them are not tested. Okay. Not all ubiquitinated proteins are destroyed in the proteasome and not all the proteins that are destroyed in the proteasome are ubiquitinated. At least three proteins are known to be degraded in the proteasome without the requirement of ubiquitin conjugation. These three proteins are RPN4, thymidylate synthase, ornithine decarboxylase. Let us see one by one. RPN4 is a transcriptional activator of proteasome genes discovered in budding yeast. It is destroyed both by ubiquitin dependent and independent mechanism. Next is thymidylate synthase. Thymidylate synthase is the enzyme catalyzing the conversion of DUMP to DTMP. It is important for DNA synthesis. 
This enzyme is degraded only by ubiquitin independent proteasomal degradation. Signal for proteasomal drug agonization lies in the N terminal region of thymidylate synthase enzyme. The last one is ornithine decarboxylase. This enzyme catalyzes the rate limiting step of polyamine biosynthesis in eukaryotes. Polyamines are needed for the regulation of cell cycle, you may be know. Polyamines are important for the regulation of cell cycle. You may be knowing this fact. Excess level of polyamines in the cell induce production of a protein known as antizyme 1. Binding of this antizyme 1 to ornithine decarboxylase enhances the degradation of ornithine decarboxylase enzyme in the proteasome. Okay, so this is how without the need of ubiquitin, ornithine decarboxylase is destroyed in the proteasome. Clear? Recent years, ubiquitin like proteins were discovered to be involved in modifying the cellular targets of the target protein. Okay, the three major ubiquitin like modifications are isgillation, nedulation, and sumylation. Let us see one by one. Isgillation, I S G Y L A T I O N. Okay, isgillation is the addition of interferon stimulated gene 15, ISG 15. This is also known as ubiquitin cross reactive protein because it shares antigenicity between the ubiquitin. The same antibody that recognizes ubiquitin can also cross react with this ISG 15. That is why it is known as ubiquitin cross reacting protein. Okay, this is the first ubiquitin like modifier to be identified. Isgillation is similar to but not same as ubiquitination. Okay, next is nedulation. Nedulation is the addition of NED8. Neural precursor cell express developmentally down regulated gene 8 also known as RUB1. NED8 shares 60 percentage amino acid sequence identity to ubiquitin. Culin family of proteins are the targets of nedulation. Nedulation is very important for DNA repair. The final and important one is sumylation. Sumylation is the addition of small ubiquitin like modifier. Sumylation is involved in nuclear cytosolic transport, transcriptional regulation, apoptosis, protein stability, response to stress and cell cycle regulation. You might have studied that sumylation is one of the histone post translational modification. Okay. There is no storage form of protein in the body. Proteins after serving their purpose have to be destroyed. There are two major modes of destruction of protein. One is lysosomal protein degradation. The other is ubiquitin proteasomal degradation which we have discussed so far. So, it is important to differentiate the ubiquitin proteasomal system from the lysosomal protein degradation. If you see the table, you can understand the difference clearly. Ubiquitin proteasomal system is ATP dependent. It needs ATP. Okay. For lysosomal protein degradation, you don't need ATP. Ubiquitin proteasomal system destroys usually intracellular short lived regulatory proteins. For example, cyclin. You know cyclin. The half life of cyclin is like seconds. Okay. So, the cyclins they cycle. The level fluctuates in the cell cycle. That is why the name itself is cyclin. Okay. After their role is done, they have to be destroyed. Otherwise, the excess action of cyclin will lead to cancer. Okay. Cyclins are regulated by cyclin dependent kinase and ultimately your ubiquitin proteasomal system. Okay. Lysosomal protein degradation system is usually involved in destruction of extracellular long lived structural proteins as well as some intracellular proteins also. Proteolysis is achieved by 20C. Okay. Proteolysis is achieved by 20S core with AAA protease in ubiquitin proteasomal system. 
in lysosomal protein degradation system the proteolysis is achieved by lysosomal acid hydrolysis like cathepsins the final objective of this module is to learn about the prokaryotic ubiquitins ubiquitin is found only in eukaryotes okay there is no ubiquitin in prokaryotes the ubiquitin like protein that is pup is an ubiquitin analog discovered in mycobacterium tuberculosis addition of prokaryotic ubiquitin like protein is known as pupillation similar to ubiquitin this pu protein is also attached to the lysine residue of the target protein through isopeptide bond the mechanism is same but ubiquitination is a three step process pupillation is a two step process now let us summarize and revise what we have learnt ubiquitin proteasomal system mediates degradation of many but not all proteins the nobel prize in chemistry 2004 was awarded jointly to aaron avram and irwin rose for the discovery of ubiquitin mediated protein degradation ubiquitin is a small heat stable compact globular protein with 76 amino acid containing 7 lysine residue the 76th amino acid is glycine okay mammalian ubiquitin is coded by the following four different genes that we have seen ubiquitination does not always imply the destruction of target protein ubiquitination serves various functions depending on the number and the way of addition of ubiquitin molecules ubiquitination involves three atp dependent enzymatic sequential steps that is activation conjugation and ligase reaction there is only one e1 around 30 e2 and more than 600 e3 enzyme this e3 enzymes they are the determining factors of the specificity of ubiquitin proteasomal system clear polyubiquitinated proteins are destroyed by the barrel shaped 26s proteasome ubiquitin proteasomal system is involved in the endoplasmic reticulum associated protein degradation that is errad the tumor suppressor gene vhl is nothing but an e3 ubiquitin ligase for vascular endothelial growth factor mdm2 is an ubiquitin ligase for p53 production the e6 oncogenic protein of hpv is an ubiquitin ligase for p53 bortezomib is the first proteasomal inhibitor approved in 2003 by us fda for the treatment of multiple myeloma thymidylate synthase and arnithine decarboxylase are the two enzymes that undergo ubiquitin independent proteasomal degradation esgilation nedulation and sumylation are the three major ubiquitin like modification ubiquitin proteasomal degradation is quite different from lysosomal protein degradation prokaryotic ubiquitin like protein pup is an ubiquitin analog discovered in mycobacterium tuberculosis dear students this completes the module on ubiquitin proteasomal system i hope you have enjoyed this module all the best thank you